Hey everyone, I apologize. Uh, apparently that you needed to hit the big go live button um, and I wasn't really aware of that. So I thought I was already streaming. So I apologize for being late. So let me know if the volume is okay, guys. Um, let me know that the stream quality is kind of not good or whatever. Um, yeah, just keep me posted. I'm still pretty new to live streaming. So let me know if something's wrong. So I, and just before this, I had the default Archviz scene open. So I'm just going to close this. And this Archviz scene is fully ray traced. Nothing is baked in here. And it looks pretty good, right? <clears throat> so the scene is awesome, but it's pretty heavy. Like I'm running on 2060 Super right now, and the frame rate's about 30 frames per second, and it's not awesome. So uh, tonight we're going to take a look at GPU light mass, and GPU light mass is pretty new. Uh, I think the official release was in 4.26, and this really makes base lighting so much easier. Before GPU light mass, base lighting was a major, major pain in the ass. It was not fun to work with. It was slow. Um, there were so hundreds of settings to work with, and it was just you know what? It was not awesome. And uh, it did give decent results, but it was extremely tedious. And in production, you don't have time to fiddle around with settings, right? You just need something to work consistently and reliably. And that's why, personally, I've usually just worked with dynamic lights, even at the cost of quality, but it's consistent and reliable, right? And in production, you don't have time. If you have a delivery at 4 o'clock, you don't have time to wonder, like, oh, why is my, uh, why is my shadows not baking properly, right? So, um, <clears throat> so without further ado... Let's take a look at GPU light mass, how it works, how to set it up, and once that's done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up a um, like a, a still life scene, you know, with a fruit bowl, whatever, that sort of thing, and we're going to compare both uh, base lighting and dynamic lighting. So let's start from scratch with a whole blank scene and uh, go from there. So I'm going to go empty level, and now we have a totally blank scene right here. And the first thing I like to do is creating a post-process volume, all right? So I'm going to go here, create post-process volume. And the first thing I do is I turn off auto exposure for one. Oh, hey there, VR division. Let's see you again. Um, yeah, so to, to disable your, po your auto exposure, you have to set the min EV100 and max EV100, set them both to one. Okay, this disables auto exposure. It's the worst thing in the world. You can probably disable it in your project settings, but this works too. The next thing you do when created post process volume is you want to set it to unbound and set it to on. So that way, you, you know, it just it, it affects your entire scene. Close that. And now we're ready to start setting up a very quick scene, right? So what are we going to do? So I have a few wall segments here. So if I type for wall and filter by static mesh. Hi there, Mozzie. So I have a few wall segments here. And this is the, these walls right here, as you might see, uh, wall 400 by 200, so on and so forth. Um, these are kind of all included in the starter content, right? So if you don't have the starter content added in your project, you can easily just click on add here add feature a content pack. And I believe if you go to content pack, you can do starter content. Okay, you can add all that starter stuff. You can add a bunch of wall segments, a bunch of base materials, effects, that type of thing. So starter con I actually like having the starter content there because sometimes it's just nice to have something to start with. So these wall segments right here, it, they're included in the starter content. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this there. Yeah, so I'll place it here like that. And we're just going to set up a very basic, quick scene. So I'm going to rotate like that. I'm going to set these both to zero. Come on. Thanks so much, Nicholas. I appreciate that. So there we go. Let's go start setting up our scene. We're just going to make a very, very quick and easy uh, interior type of level right now. That's what I'm doing. So I'm going to duplicate this. Okay. And one more time. Now, I know you can't really see much because, you know, there's no light. 
I'm going to create a directional light just so I can see a little bit better. And directional light, there we go. Don't worry, I know it's panicking and flickery. It's fine. Ugh. You know what? This is actually really annoying. I'm just going to... Yeah. So now I'm going to create a floor. Because we need a floor. Oh, thanks so much, Mr. Toma. Create a floor here, something simple. And okay, I need to disable the ray traced GI right now. So ray traced, I'm gonna disable this. I'm gonna disable all ray tracing effects. There we go, now it's less panicky. So I got my floor, I'm gonna duplicate that floor. And now we're starting to get, now we have a beautiful, beautiful room. Just kidding. Now I need to bring this deck down here. There we go. So what I want is just a small, just window coming, sun coming through a window. That's basically the all I'm trying to do right now, okay? So before we get started with GPU light mass, Um, what we're going to do is we need to enable GPU Light Mass as a plugin. So if you haven't already, you need to make sure you enable that because you're not going to find it otherwise. So you need to make sure you're on Unreal 4.26. You're going to go to Settings, Plugins, and if you type GPU, you'll see GPU Light Mass pop up. Make sure that's enabled. Otherwise, GPU Light Mass is not going to work. So once it's done, restart your engine. It'll be back up and running. Okay, so now that I've placed my light, now, don't worry, I know we can't really see anything right now. What I want to do next is I want to open up the GPU light mass window. So you go next to the build, do you see there's a little arrow button next to build up here? You'll see GPU light mass, okay? You're gonna get a new window that pops up. I'm gonna make this smaller for now, so to less space. And for the most part, you can kind of leave this to default, okay? So we're gonna hit build, build lighting and see where that takes us. Now you'll see at the bottom it says slow mode. You can hit control R to exit slow mode. So, or you can do this here. There we go. Ugh. Uh, yeah, of course, you need to make sure that your light is set to stationary. Common mistake. So the first thing you need to do when you're baking light is you need to set your lights to either static or stationary. I prefer stationary because reasons. So it has to be set to stationary for bake lighting to work. So we're going to hit build lighting again. There we go. Now we have something. I'm going to move this over here. So now you can see we have some, you know, some, some, some light coming in and light bouncing through our scene, right? This is what we wanted, but of course, you know, A, it looks pretty bad, right? So at least, at least we've gotten this far. We've got something to work with, and now it's only going to get better from here. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so T, I'm using a RTX 2060 Super. Um, but fortunately, when it comes to baked lighting, uh, you don't need ray tracing. That's the beauty of base lighting. You can have a 1080, you can have a 1660, a card that's not RTX, and it's going to work because you don't need. It's not a real-time ray tracing thing. So uh, I'm just using one, just one RTX 2060 Super. I'm actually pretty happy with it. It's a great little card. So. Now that we have something, you'll, th what's the first thing we notice here? We notice we got some really weird artifacts everywhere. All the colors are kind of splotchy. The shadows are real bad. Uh, it's, it's, it's not great. So what's the reason for this? We need to increase the resolution of our light maps. Okay, so how do you increase the resolution of your light maps? You're going to select your mesh. And in the search details panel, you want to type for res. So R-E-S. And you'll see right here in lighting, overridden light map resolution, okay? Click on that, 
And I'm going to set this to, let's say, 1024. I'm going to go a little bit higher um, for the sake of this video. I mean, I would love to have a 3090, to be honest, uh, King Kong. I would love to have a 3090, but they're way too expensive. I can't really afford or justify that purchase right now. Having two, that's amazing. I don't know if Unreal supports multi-GPU at the moment, but uh, heck, I mean, if you can afford a 3090, I say go for it. It totally helps. And uh, for and Jesse Thorpe, um, a GPU I recommend for ray tracing get the best card you can afford. Either get the, a 3070, 3080, 3090. Um, if you want something more more budget friendly, a 3060 with a lot of VRAM is going to be amazing. So I'm going to set all these models to have 1024 light map resolution. And you can override them here. Okay, so you'll notice we kind of lost our lighting when we changed the resolution. That's fine. We have to rebake anyway. <clears throat> now, another thing that's really important, base lighting depends on what we call light map UVs. Okay, and light map UVs are critically important. If you don't have light map UVs, this is not going to work. You're going to get nasty results. The reason why I chose these models that are in student included in the starter pack is because they've been UV'd correctly. Okay. Um, so how do you verify if you have light map UVs? It's really simple. Let's go ahead and open this right here. Uh, yeah, Fatih, uh, RTX is pretty important for, uh, for real-time work in general. So once you have your static mesh editor open, I'm just going to close this one more time just so you can see where it is. I'm going to open up my static mesh here, double click on that, and here, Okay, if you want to see if your mesh has light map UV, you click on a UV channel button up here. And you'll see UV channel 0, and you'll see that the UVs are massive. They're outside of the 0, 1 range, but that's fine. And you'll see channel 1 right here. And these, the second channel, uh, that's the, where your light map UV will be, will be. So every single model in your scene when you're using base lighting needs to have light map UVs. This is critically important there's no way around it okay um, because the lighting is effectively baked to that second uv channel okay and that's why i wasn't really excited about baked lighting in the past because it just makes that much more work to do of course you know just doing a second uv channel uh it, it it's fine but it, it is much more time consuming right you have to do two uv channels for every single asset in your scene and in production, when you're in a rush, you don't always have time for that. And thanks, Miguel. You, they, you need to make sure that the UVs don't overlap at all. If they overlap, it's just going to not, it's going to break. It's not going to look good at all. Um, so as you can see here in this UV channel here, there is no overlap. Okay, so if if you have, you know, like a um, UV shell that are overlapping for, to save texture space, you can't do that. Your second UV channel needs to have no overlapping UV shells and... Yeah, so it's, it's not as important for it to be as efficiently packed as your first UV channel, as long as there's no overlap. So, now that that's out of the way, I'm going to close this, and we're going to hit the bake button one more time, or the build lighting, sorry. And now it's in slow mode, you can hit Control r to get out of slow mode, and you'll see right here. Slow mode is more of a way to... Um, quickly preview how the light's going to look in your scene, but it's going to build much faster when you go, when you turn off the real-time mode. Now we're, because we've increased the resolution of our light maps, uh, you'll see it's much slower to build now. This is normal. This is why, like, when you're, generally when you're lighting, you want to keep your resolution of your light maps pretty low, or as low as you can, um, while still getting okay results. And when you're ready to finally be done with your stuff, then you can uh, then you can increase the resolution afterwards. Yeah, VR division. Um, UVs are a nightmare. I hate UVs. It, they're terrible. I wish that you could just try planner everything at all times. It would be great. Okay, and there we have it. Now we've got something much cleaner. We're getting a much, much better result now, right? So... One thing you may notice, one thing that's very important when you're baking light is 
make sure that you actually turn off your ray tracing effects because Epic has stated themselves in the documentation. Uh, I will link the documentation uh, for GPU light math in the description below after we're done with the live stream. Uh, they actually recommend turning off all ray tracing effects. Okay, so I've already turned them off. And uh, hi, big negative. Nice to see you. Uh, so you can do the console command for turning off all ray tracing effects. Okay, so it's called r dot ray tracing dot force all ray tracing effects zero. Okay, so I have it set to uh, to zero right now. Turning it back on will uh, sending it to one will make ray tracing effects on. Setting it to zero will turn ray tracing effects off. And now you'll see we get all these weird, you know, splotchy jittery things like this it's not it's not very good it's not awesome uh you'll notice in the in the shadow scenes just kind of get wonky like this um this is not good so epic actually recommends that you turn off ray tracing effects when using baked lighting so i'm gonna go ahead and turn that off again because there we go <clears throat> so now that we've increased the resolution of our light maps uh, you'll see everything's much cleaner, right? Everything much better. But you'll notice we still get so, a little bit of some weird things here. We get some artifacts up here. We've got some, you know, some, some really splotchy. When you get up close, you see it, things are very splotchy. It's not perfect. It's not, um, it's, it's not great yet. There's still some improvements that we can make. But we've, you know, we've established something pretty decent for starters. Um, and it's, like I said, it's only going to get better from here, and it's pretty simple. So what do we want to do next? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to try turning off ambient occlusion, because these black lines here are caused by two things. Either your light map resolution is too low, or ambient occlusion. So in the post-process volume, I'm going to go to Details panel, I'm going to turn on, go check for ambient occlusion, and in intensity, I'm going to turn it off. So see, by, if I exaggerate it, uh, I don't really like the effect. I'm going to turn it off entirely because when you're baking light, you don't really need more AO on top of that. So turning off AO is another pretty good thing to do. <clears throat> so once that's done, the next thing we want to do is there's a, there's a few other settings in uh, the GPU light map, light map window here that are pretty useful, okay? And we want to make sure that you use irradiance caching. So click on that and click on first balance ray guiding. And you can leave all the settings to default. You don't need to play around with the numbers just yet. You'll see, pay attention to, I'm going to bake again and pay attention to how much brighter our scene is going to get, okay? So I'm going to build lighting one more time. Uh, turn off slow mode, there we go. Yeah, totally agreed, Nicholas. I uh, Bloom is one of those things I, I kind of like Bloom, but I agreed. Ambient occlusion, I usually turn it off when doing base lighting stuff, for sure. And big negative, uh, how was your experience with uh, RTGI? I haven't really played around with it yet. Um, I haven't compiled a new build of Unreal, but um, hey, if it worked for you, what was your experience like? Hi, Iron Scavenger. Thanks for joining. There we go. And now, notice how you may not have noticed because we had to wait a while, but you'll see like our scene got much brighter. Our scene is uh, it's definitely a lot brighter than it was, and that's because of the irradiance caching. So if you mouse over, it says irradiance caching should be enabled with interior scenes to cur to achieve more physically correct GI intensities, albeit with some biasing. So without Irradiance caching, the results may be darker than expected, and it should be disabled for exterior scenes. <clears throat> so, once that's done, so we, we've got one more thing figured out here. Now we've, we've got another. We've got this thing, with this here. This is, ugh, I, I don't want to have this nasty artifact here. Now, though, you'll, this is often something that shows up when at intersections, okay? Uh, so when you've got like a wall, corner of a wall, and light kind of bleeds through, so fortunately there's, a, fortunately, there's a setting for this, and if you go to, where is it? Yeah, it's in corner rejection. So I'm going to set this to 3, and I'm going to bake one more time. Yep, 
Yeah, I played with the Kothic build in, uh, a, just a little bit in the uh, in my previous ray tracing video, and it was really cool. I'm really impressed, and I don't think it's it's not an official release yet, but it's getting there. Oh, thanks so much, Cinematic Captures. I really appreciate it. I've really been a big fan of your work as well, so thanks for joining. Come on. So yeah, sometimes it's probably a good thing to tone down the resolution of your light map just to get, you know, a little bit faster bake. And like I said earlier, once you've established your lighting, you say, okay, I'm happy with this, bump up that resolution for your final render. Okay, and now, now you'll see we still get it, and this is, honestly, this is probably my fault. We still get this thing here. Um, either I can try bumping corner rejection even more, but what what I recommend even more is to uh, <clears throat> is to just not use a plane. Give, use a mesh with thickness instead. That might actually work better for you. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and I'm going to go add a uh, a thicker mesh up top. So fortunately, if we search for ceiling up here, we have one that we can just use. So basically, this is just a, a box with thickness, and that should get rid of our really nasty seam that we were having earlier up in the corner of the wall. There we go. So I'm going to let, leave that there. And make sure I have the same materials, basic wall, boof. There we go. And let's hit build lighting one more time. So that's the thing with base lighting. It's um it's it's kinda it's a lot of trial and error. But once you've kind of nailed all those settings correctly, it's awesome. Hi Raphael. Uh, yes, this video will absolutely be saved in my channel. So it's not going anywhere. It's not going to be unlisted at the end of this uh, at the end of this live stream. It's here to stay, and you can watch it whenever you want. Hi there, owner. One or one, sir. Okay, and there we go. Now, aha. So you'll see, now we added our ceiling, and I made a mistake, I forgot to increase the resolution of my light map of this new ceiling model. And that's why we're getting this kind of big bleeding thing here, because there's not enough pixels to uh, to get a proper accurate shadows. So what am I going to do? I'm going to bump this up, res, set this to, let's say 512 for this guy. Build lighting one more time. Hi Alexandra, thanks for joining. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hi there, Guy. Oh, I pronounce your name right. Thanks so much, Nicholas. I appreciate that. Okay, and there we have it. Now we got our ceiling up there with no nasty artifacts in the seams. So again, it's uh, it's all about you know having thickness on your mesh and playing around with the corner rejection. Now there is one more thing that I want to take a look at with you guys, in order to get the best possible quality when it comes to bake lighting. Hi, Christian. And Antonio, welcome. So you, you may notice, I'm not sure if with the quality of the stream, if you're going to see uh, this kind of nasty splotching. Let me know in the chat, guys, if uh, if you guys can see this or not. Uh, you notice how you got like these rings? You've got this odd stipple gradient. Hi, Martin. Welcome. Um, let me know if you guys see this or not. And it, you get this really nasty splotching. It's... Uh, Yes, exactly. Thanks, Nicholas. Uh, it, it's not really good. And, you know, f for now, it's fine. 
Um, but this is probably not what you want in your final render, right? Um, so there's a really easy way to fix this, and that's by going into the world settings up here. Okay, so I'm going to undock this because my stupid face is in the way. And if you don't, ha if you don't see world settings, uh, go to the window tab and go to world settings right here. Okay, and in your world settings, you're going to want to go ahead right down here where it says compress light maps. Okay, so uh, when you mouse over, it says like whether to compress light map textures or not. Disabling light map texture compression will reduce artifacts but increase memory and disk size by four times. So use caution when disabling this. And yeah, it's... Uh, <clears throat> oh, thanks, Andrew. I'll uh, try cranking my audio up. Thanks. Anyone else uh, notice if I'm a little bit quiet? Don't feel, don't be ashamed of letting me know. <clears throat> so I'm going to um, hit uncheck compress light maps. And yes, it takes up more space, but it's the, the way that, uh, it's the way to get the best result. So I'm gonna increase my volume here. How about that guys? Is that a little bit better? Let me know, thanks. Again, I'm pretty new to live streaming, so, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Learning, it's a learning process. So, now that we've unchecked compressed light maps, okay, uh, we're gonna go, I can redock this up here. There we go, and now I'm gonna take a screenshot. I'm gonna do this like that. And now... Great. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I, I really appreciate you letting me know. <laughs> okay, so now that we've unchecked compressed light maps, we're going to go ahead and build lighting one more time. And I've taken a screenshot so we can compare the before and after. Ah, oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I can't, I had no idea my volume was so low. Uh, OBS tells me that it's well within range, but... Thanks, Stefano. I appreciate it. So building lighting... Uh, that's a good question, actually. I don't know, uh, Ibrahim. I am not sure. I mean, you should be, you should be able to do GPU light math even on a Mac, I think. I don't think GPU light math is in NVIDIA setting specifically. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm not sure. So now that our bake is done, let's take a look. Now there's no more nasty splotching. I'm going to go get my other screenshot here. Where are you? There we go. So here's my, my screenshot, and I'm gonna zoom in a few actual size. So see, this was before and this is after. So notice how we had some really nasty splotching and now, now all that splotching is gone. It had to do with the light map compression. So I recommend leaving it on when you're, you know, you're, you're, uh, when you're working and when you're setting up your lighting. But when it comes to get that final delicious render, uh, turn off that compression because you will get the much better result. As you can see right here, it, it kind of speaks for itself. Thanks so much, Omar. I appreciate it. I'm glad it helped. So there you have it. That That's really the, the, the main thing that you need to do to get a decent bake. Okay. So it, it's really as simple as that. Um, GPU light mass makes things a lot easier. <clears throat> to work with. Uh, it, it, it's just really nice. It, it, it's fast. It's so much faster than the CPU bake. Uh, GPU light math is fantastic. Now, the reason I went with a very simple, basic, unsexy scene like this is because when you're playing around with lighting and familiarizing with, your, with the tools, you want to factor out as much complication as possible, right? You want to... Um, it's pretty important to to just not be swayed by materials or detailed models or anything. You want the, the bare bones to just to 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 make the whole process a bit faster and understanding what the settings do, right? Uh, yes, Alexander, I will leave this video live after. You can watch it whenever you want. Uh, so yeah, and just a few tips now. If we go into world and our outliner again and we select our post process volume, okay. 
Uh, yeah, Nicholas, I will have a Q&A, actually. <clears throat> so, in your post-process volume, we're going to search for indirect lighting, okay? So you have a global illumination. We've got a few settings here. And I want to show you guys that really nifty, pretty cool feature uh, that I really, really love because it's non-destructive. So if you check this little checkbox here and you play around with it, you can accentuate your indirect lighting as much as you want. You have full control. So let's say you baked your lighting and you're not really happy with, uh, with the results. You know, you're like, oh, instead of brightening your light or darkening your light, you can just play around with the indirect lighting setting here, okay? So this is very useful. When you bake your lighting, excuse me, it's not destructive. So that's how you would do it. So now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to throw, a, I'm going to set up a, um, a scene that looks a little bit better. Um, this is with the very basic scene, just to show you guys the, the very core fundamentals of GPU light mass. Um, and now I'm going to just take the time to just create a, a similar scene, but with some better models. So I'm going to go ahead and go out of here, move this, and I'm going to find my other models. So I've got wall here, and I've got wall here. Actually, I think I have this scene saved already. So I might save some time. Uh, note save. Okay, so see, you'll see here I've got a very simple office scene, and I'm going to, don't worry, I'm going to delete all the lights, and I'm going to start from scratch for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the HDR backdrop, delete that, delete the directional light, and I'm going to, so now we have some base lighting, but that's okay. So I'm just going to move the light, and there you go. So we have a very simple scene. The reason why I wanted to get this scene up is because, it, you know, it's got some more interesting shape. It's got some moldings up here, some different textures on the walls, uh, a, a better floor, that sort of thing. So we're going to start the lighting from scratch. One more time, and this time I'm going to bring in a skylight, okay? <clears throat> so, and T Tyler, uh, no, I didn't add in light mass important volume because it's not, it doesn't quite work the same way with GPU light mass. Uh, it's only partially supported, and I'm not going to pretend that I know exactly how GPU light mass works with the light mass importance volume. So, yeah. <clears throat> So yeah, uh, you're actually absolutely right, Gaurav. I, I am actually a little bit distracted because there are so many questions. I want to answer all those questions. So um, I think I'm going to answer questions while the light's baking just because it's going to be a lot easier that way. So now I'm going to create another directional light. And I'm going to have... Oh man, thanks so much, Gaurav. I really appreciate it. So what do I want here? I want a light coming through the window. And I'm going to add a skylight. So I'm going to have an HDRI backdrop. I really like it because it actually has a, a sky dome uh, with the texture projected on it. And it, if you don't see this, you need to enable the plugin for that. Okay, so again, if you want an HDRI backdrop, go to settings, plugins, and type HDRI and make sure that HDRI backdrop is enabled. So I'm going to place this right here. Move this down. Also, just to be clear, clear, guys, I know this is a live stream and I'm answering questions, but I will be making a specific video on GPU light mass in the future. So don't worry, there's going to be like a, a short and sweet version of this video as well. Okay, just so you know. Just, so don't feel bad about me just like blabbing off and ranting. So we have our HDRI, or, sorry, our HDRI backdrop here. And so that's what I mean. I, I kind of like this because it's got, you know, you actually see something outside the window, right? So I'm going to make sure that I align the sun with our actual directional light. Oops, and rotate this. So you kind of want to make sure that the sun in your HDRI kind of lines up with your directional light as well. Because otherwise things might look a little bit weird. So I'm going to want, let's say I want my sun to shine through like... Eh, let's say something like that. So I'm going to make sure my HDRI is lined up the same way, something like this. And with an HDRI backdrop, you need to make sure that the skylight inside the HDRI backdrop is set to stationary. 
So we're going to scroll down here and you'll see I select my HDRI backdrop and you see Skylight inside here. Click on that and make sure you set that to stationary. Super important. If it's not set to stationary, your lighting's not going to bake properly. And in light, I'm going to set this to real-time capture. There we go. And now we already have something a bit more interesting we can see outside. So we have our directional light stationary as well, just making sure. And now I think we're ready to bake. So I'm just going to save this and we're going to hit build lighting. Okay, I can answer some questions now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I, at HD SUSO, I think the compression is probably for video games. That's a really good point, actually. Uh, because in games, you need, to you need to save a lot of space. Um, you probably need to optimize a little bit, so it's probably related to a games thing. So, I'm not using a, a, a light math important volume right now. Uh, I don't think you actually need it. Um, I might actually just create one just to be on the safe side, um, but I don't remember seeing any major differences. I could be wrong, though. I, I seem to remember that um, the light mass important volume only really works to help out with the volumetric light maps. So I might just for good measure add an important volume right now. Um, Antonio, you know what, I'm, I don't think I will, because really all I care about right now is just getting a decent result, and I'm not going to go into the physically accurate results, but you can definitely do that. There's no right or wrong answer here. Oh my goodness, all the questions, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, so now that our lighting is baked now, um, you'll notice it's a little bit dark. So the main reason for that is our skylight is not very bright. We can probably bump up the intensity of our skylight. Um, and I'm just gonna make sure in my post-process volume that I haven't set um, the resolution wrong. Not the resolution, sorry, the uh, indirect lighting. Okay, so if I set the 10, for example, 20, you'll see now we're starting to get some pretty cool, some pretty cool results. Um, but I think I need to bump up the intensity of my lights for now. So I can set this back to 1, and I'm going to increase my sun's intensity to something like 50, at least for now. And my HDR backdrop, I can set the intensity to 4 or 5. Not 55, 5. Um, Gritoma, uh, a good question actually, it's a really good point, because there's a way to verify what the textile density of your light maps is, and that's by, there's a totally useful feature for that and that's here in lit and you go to optimization view modes and you can go to light map density and you'll see you'll get a better feeling for what is too dense and what is not dense so you can kind of know what the um what the resolution of your maps are so this table is obviously way too low so i'm going to bump up the resolution of this to something like you know 5 256 maybe yeah that, that should be fine Okay, so going back to lit, I'm going to bake my lighting one more time. Erdal, uh, in terms of mega scans while using ray tracing, especially on wind on plant foliages, that definitely seems to be a ray traced. Um, a ray trace skylight shadows issue with wind specifically. So if you turn off the ray trace shadows on your skylight, you should get rid of your wind uh, shadowing issues on your grass and foliage and stuff. Oh, it's in slow mode. There we go. I'll be much faster this way. And yeah, Gorov, I'll definitely be doing something in, in materials in the future, for sure. Then again, materials is a pretty vague topic, right? It's um, very vague. There's a lot of ground to cover there.
That's a good question, Tyler. I'm not entirely sure because I haven't actually tried. Um, I think so. But I could be wrong. And okay, now we've got something a little bit brighter. I may have to accentuate these values even more. So I'm going to go in my indirect here, put process volume, whoops, and probably bump this up a little bit more. So now we're starting to get something. We're starting to get a decent result. So this is why. Aha, so we're no noticing some few weird things here. That might be a resolution thing, might be a light map thing. <clears throat> yeah, this looks a little bit weird. But for now, hmm, this looks pretty not pretty bad. <clears throat> but yeah, so we're we're starting to get some results that are actually not too bad here. Notice what's really nice is getting, you know, the, this kind of lighting up here that you're just not going to get with ray traced lighting or at least in its current state thanks diego i uh i wasn't sure about that so that's basically how you get any kind of light to work so we've got our skylight we've got our skylight coming in let's say for example i were to hide my directional light and only wanted skylight light to come in i can go ahead here and i'm gonna hide my Directional light, and I'm going to increase the brightness of this HDRI backdrop to like 20. And I got to build one more time. Uh, flash gun. Um, I've only been using uh, stationary lights, so maybe they fixed it. I'm not sure. I've never knew that um, stationary lights didn't work with GPU light mass. I mean, yeah. Oh, you're probably totally right, Nicholas. Um, I also generally like to work with real life values, but then again, I come to from the philosophy of hey, if it looks good, that's what all that matters. But you you wouldn't be you're definitely not wrong to use real, real you know real life settings, so to speak. As long as everything else in your scene is also set correctly, you know, proper, properly um, set up materials, you know, your roughness values are within reasonable range, that sort of thing. As long as everything is kind of within real, re you know, reasonable range, then that's a great way to work. Oh, thanks for joining, Nunzio. The video will be here for you to see later, so don't worry about that. There we go. All right, so now I've hid my directional light. So my directional light is not actually casting light anymore. This scene is being purely lit by the skylight. Okay, so now we got some light shining in. And in fact, everything kind of looks a bit better, except for this. This looks a little bit weird here. Um, and that's kind of the, the thing that you need to be aware of when working with... Uh, Base lighting, you're always going to encounter a few odd things, and that's probably actually probably has to do with the fact that my ground is just a plane. So I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to duplicate this so that my ground actually has thickness. Are they really flash gun? That's interesting. I mean, just out of curiosity, I'll, I'll try with static light and see if it works. But yeah, so far I've only been using stationaries and it works. So yeah, exactly. Let's try something like that. Leave that like there and change the material to wood. Let's see what kind of material I can put in my floor now. Uh, try that. Yeah, I might have to change the tiling a little bit, but that's fine for now. And let's build lighting one more time. That's the process with building lighting. is it's, it's, it's just constant. You try again, you try again, you try again. And that's why um, I'm actually leaving my resolution higher now because I can take, it gives me time to answer the questions. But uh, when you're working yourself, I totally recommend that you work with lower light map resolutions for starters. Once you're happy with your lighting, then you can start bumping them up. Uh, 
Um, I'm not sure, Josh. There we go. No, we're still getting some wonkiness here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a light maps, a light maps important volume right now, just so we can factor out that. So to create a light mass important volume, we're gonna go to volumes here, and there's a ton of volumes. So I'm gonna type for light mass important volume. You know, just for good measure, scale this up. You want it to encompass your entire scene. Uh, yeah, Nicholas, definitely. If you're uh, only working with dynamic lights, uh, you can't really bake. So you're going to get a much better visual quality with baked lighting in general. Um, but with ray tracing now, it's getting really close. Like, you're getting really, really damn good results with just, you know, dynamic lights. Um, for now, baked lighting is still kind of the way to go. You want the absolute best quality. Uh, but I would definitely say that it's, um, <clears throat> I personally prefer working with purely ray traced lights, not totally dynamic lights, just because it, it's, it's more responsive. What you see is what you get. There's no unexpected wonky issues. Um, so yeah. Almost done. Hi there, William. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. Yeah, no. So maybe increasing like like one of the you guys said, increasing the, the, the light bias. <clears throat> but for now, you know, it, it's okay where I want it to be okay, so this is kind of fine. So this is what's nice about working with baked lighting. It's, it's just really clean, and it's snappy, and it's fast. Like, I'm still at 120 FPS here. Um, if I wanted to get the same look with purely ray-traced lighting, uh, it, my frame rate would not be anywhere near 120 FPS, okay? So that's kind of the trade-off. You can get pretty darn good results with ray-traced or dynamic lights at the cost of performance, okay? And... So it's only, it, it is easier and faster to work with dynamic lights, but if you have the, the know-how and the time to set up light map UVs and bake your lighting, excuse me, um, the performance gain that you get will be totally worth it. Maybe that's going to change in Unreal Engine 5, but who knows. So now... Yeah, no, this is this is getting we're, we're getting somewhere now. So I'm gonna see what my indirect lighting is. Yeah, so something like that is probably that's really weird though. Maybe if I uh, scale this this way, I'm gonna bake one more time just to kind of make sure that it's just not my floor that was causing the issue. There we go. In what scene are you talking about there, Tyler? Bake my scene one more time. Did you find you can't get out of uh, slow mode by doing control R? You can go to a little arrow here and disable real time override and it should go back to, you know, fast mode. Oh yeah, yeah, Gorov. I have really, absolutely have hit the tried the apartment scene. That's awesome. I've I've used it many times in a few of my previous videos. Uh, one one, sir. Your card is an RTX a GTX ten sixty. I mean, not gonna lie, ten sixty is starting to be a pretty old card. Uh, I mean, th I think that's the same. As my laptop has a nine seventy, so it's about the same power as a ten sixty. Um, if your PC is frozen, I wouldn't be surprised if it's GPU related, but it might be something else. <clears throat> hmm. 
But which interior scene are you talking about, Tyler? Are you talking about the the, uh, the apartment scene? The arch of his apartment scene? There we go. No, that's... Uh... <clears throat> no, I don't have the DLSS plugin right now. So I'm going to go here. And... Now, you'll notice the one thing I really miss... Now, because I know Epic had recommended you turn off ray tracing effects, but I, I really like the ray tracing effect. Like, ray tracing reflections really make your scene so much better. So if I wanted the shiny reflections on the floor, I can probably turn on, you know, screen space reflections, but they're not, they're never great, right? It's, uh, they're, they're fine, but like I said, they're, they're not awesome. I much prefer ray trace reflections because they're that much better. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on ray tracing again. And now you'll see, now we get some better, everything just much brighter in our scene. You see our reflections are kind of showing up on the ground. I'm going to bump these samples by 8 or something. There we go. So you'll see now we're getting, of course, we're getting the stippling from the ray traced uh, global illumination. But you'll see we actually have some proper reflections on the floor. It just kind of makes the scene just a little bit better. <clears throat> so, whoa, 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 whoa. So that's pretty much, the, that's just the basics of GPU light mass. Um, we've covered basically all the settings that you really need to change. So again, the main things you need to change are use the radiance caching, use first bound ray guiding. You don't really, I mean, if you really know what you're doing, you can play with the GI samples and stuff, but for the most part, it's, it's not super necessary. Um, the default settings work pretty well out of the box. So yeah, so it's all about your light map resolution and just having enough, just waiting for it. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to, I'm just gonna set up, take the time to, I got some mega scans assets that I got from Bridge and I'm going to start laying out, um, you know, like a small little scene with, you know, like a fruit basket, a light, still life scene. And I'm gonna go ahead and light that, which uh, we can do a little bit of both. We can do a little bit of uh, just, dynamic lighting and baked lighting and we can see hey what looks best so without further ado i don't think i'm going to need the entire thing but i'm going to go ahead and create a level sequence call it uh interior lighting there i'm going to save so i'm going to create a camera i'm going to close this for now now, the first thing I like doing when I create a new camera, uh, so as you notice, I created a new sequence in here, I created a new camera. The first thing I do when I create a camera is I select it and I change the, fil the, the film back. I don't like 16.9 digital film. I prefer working in 16.9 DSLR. It's a little bit wider, okay? So it actually has the same um, film back settings as a full frame DSLR, and that just makes the most sense to me. <clears throat> So it seems you guys want to have a little bit of art, artificial light, so I can probably do that too, of course. So I can go ahead and create a uh, just a small little spotlight here, or something, maybe a little point light. I'm gonna go ahead and delete my HDR backdrop just so that we don't get that light in. Yes, the stream will be saved on the channel later, so you can view it whenever you want. So I'm gonna go here. There we go. I'm gonna move this light here. So let's say we, all we want is just like a little bit of a, a, a light on top of your scene like this. Okay. I'm gonna increase the source radius a little bit by like five, something like that. Okay. So I got my just a little point light up here and I set the stationary and I'm just gonna bake this see where it takes us let's see GPU light mass open that build it thanks it here oh uh, 
Dari Armin, yes, GPU light mass is way faster than CPU bake. Like it's not even, it's not even funny how much better GPU light mass is. It's a lot easier to work with, and because it's faster, it also means that you can iterate changes much faster as well. So like you can learn from your mistakes much faster, right? You can learn, you can make new. <clears throat> how how would you say it? Um, a life philosophy that I why there we go. So a life philosophy that I, I really tend to abide by is make mistakes faster. And the reason I say that is because the more mistakes you make, the faster you learn. And the faster you learn, the more you progress as an artist, right? So it, it's because GPU light math is so much faster, you can learn from your mistakes that much faster as well, which means you're just going to get better and better way faster. So Tyler, uh, the reason for slow mode is because you can get a bit, you can actually change some settings here. Uh, so you can actually bake only whatever you're looking at. So slow mode will give you a, a faster preview of what the lighting will look like um, at the cost of taking longer to bake the whole scene. Yeah, I figured you were watching uh, Yahia. I, I know I, I know your channel and I, I know your face, but I couldn't remember what your name was. So, so thanks for joining. Okay, so there we have it. We just placed a, little, a small local light up here, and now, we, of course, it's it's terrible lighting. It looks like you know a light you turn on in your bedroom. It's not it's not very cozy at all, right? But you'll see. We we got our shadows baked. We got our indirect lighting shining underneath the table. This behaves the way I would expect it to behave, right? Um, you know, so yeah, so th this this works with uh, local artificial lights as well. You can change the uh, source length here too. So if I make this like this, I want to make like a fluorescent light, you can do that as well. Did you guys see what I just did there? So if you go to source length at the bottom on your point light, you can change the width of it. And by changing the source radius, you can make it thinner or fatter or whatever. So I'm going to move this over here to get this sweet, sweet like LED. Oh, I'm going to put it right over the desk. Yeah. Kind of like a typical gamer setup. I'm gonna make it like blue or whatever. Thanks, you here. I'm gonna put this here. Move that there. Typical. Uh, and in theory, this should bake nicely as well. This is actually the first time I bake lighting with this type of light specifically, so I guess we'll find out how this looks, right? One, there we go. And let's bake this light and see how this looks. Oh man, but I have to make it RGB because then like, what's even the point in having LEDs, man? If it's not RGB, like, is it even worth getting LEDs at all? I don't think so. How's everyone else gonna know I'm a gamer if I don't have RGB? Exactly. You gain FPS by having RGB. <laughs> so there you have it. So now, so this actually works. I'm actually glad to, to confirm this. So when you get increase the source length of your spotlight, or not your spotlight, your point light, um, it will it, it will bake properly. But now I kind of have to make this RGB. So I'm going to make this a sweet, sweet, like red or something. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And maybe have another one in the corner that's like blue. Something like that. Yes, all the rainbow puke. There we go. I mean, how is everyone going to know I'm a YouTuber without these LED strips everywhere, right? I'm going to make this source length even longer like that. <clears throat> make this one like blue or something. Yeah. And put another one in the other corner. And we're going to make this like green. There we go. Something like that. And now, let's hit build lighting. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> it did go from an office to a brothel. And the next time we bake, I'll show you guys another advantage of what the slow mo, or not slow mo, the slow, uh, the slow bake thing does, and how you can only bake small portions of your scene instead of having to bake the entire scene. No, my hair does not have RTX reflections enabled. Um, <clears throat> it, uh, if anything, I need to increase the groom count of my hair because I'm losing it all. Okay, and there we have it. Now we have our bake, and our scene looks really terrible. Never light your bedroom this way. It looks awful. <clears throat> but as you can see, it, like this basically behaves the way I would expect it to. So I'm going to delete this light because this is really ugly. And um, I'll show you guys a neat little trick when it comes to... I, You know what? I'm going to delete all these, and I'm going to use a directional light because directional lights just look better. I want that nice, cozy... At late afternoon feel. There we go, something like that. Yeah. Make this light a little bit warmer, something like that. And now we're going to go ahead, right here in the GPU light math window, okay? We have, you see here, we have full bake and bake what you see. And that basically does what you would expect it to. So do bake what you see and let's see what it does. So what this essentially is doing is instead of baking the entire scene, it's going to bake only what your camera is looking at. Okay, so I'm going to hit build lighting to show you guys what I mean. And now you'll see it's baking much faster because it only baked what I was looking at here, right? So that was like super fast. And what you can do then is hit the save button. And wait for it to save all the light maps. Funny, saving the light maps takes longer than baking the actual light. There we go. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. What? Oh shit, I forgot to hit stop. There we go. Yeah, don't forget to hit stop. But you'll see the rest of the bedroom didn't bake, but next to the office it did. I'm going to increase the, uh, I got to 75. There we go. And build lighting one more time. There we go. So now you'll see it's building so much faster because it doesn't have the entire room to bake. Then you can hit save. So GPU light math is not, doesn't have anything to do with reflections actually. The reflections on real are either ray traced or they are screen space. So the reflections in general are totally irrelevant to the lighting. So now I'm going to hit stop because I've already saved. And you'll see, notice, notice here how like over here is all pixelated because it hasn't actually baked the lighting in that area. It's only baked where I looked at. So this bake what you see feature is super, super useful um, because it, it can kind of, you can kind of just piece your scene together bit by bit instead of, instead of having to wait for the entire scene to, to bake, right? So I'm going to go to my post-process volume, and I'm going to set my indirect lighting, and I'm going to bump this up. It's already at 4, but I'm going to set like 10 or something, just so I can get a better feel of the, of the lighting. And so now we're, we've are we got this, you know, late afternoon vibe again. But I just wanted to take the time to show you guys the bake what you see mode, because that's so handy. How's the frame rate, by the way, guys? Let me know in the comments, because, you know, I am kind of see a preview of the stream, but it seems a little bit choppy. Um, I'm not really quite sure how to fix that, but, um, oh man, thank you so much, Tyler. That's, uh, that's amazing. You're way too kind. So, <clears throat> so now that I've kind of showed you guys the artificial lighting and a few other GP light math tricks, now we can carry on. I'm going to take two minutes to answer your, some of your questions, and then we're going to get, move on towards still life lighting. So, guys, get your questions out right now. We've got two minutes. Starting to count down right now. So it is 9.08, so at 9.10, all will get started. So, yes, the semantics, it isn't. GPU Light Math is a new plugin. So if you have 
um, Unreal 4.26, you can just in the settings here, go to plugins and type GPU light mass. Thanks, Warner. Uh, Antonio. Uh, to be honest, I think uh, I would probably just stick with the GPU baker, even for the final bake, because the results are, at least from what I've used it for, have been good enough. Um, I haven't actually had to use bake lighting for a production yet, uh, but for my own personal work, GPU light math has been awesome. <clears throat> uh, Nicholas, I think the donate button, I think it's called a super chat. I, I'm pretty new to all the terms, so I could be wrong. <clears throat> Any other questions, guys? We got uh, still got one more minute before we take off on uh, still life lighting. Uh, yes, I believe you can set to have a, d a bigger stream pool. I think you changed that in your project settings somewhere. Um, <clears throat> so if you change it your project settings, then you won't need to set it, change it ever again. I think uh, that or in the. Uh, <clears throat> Oh, I forget what you can probably change like the actual startup file in Unreal as well. Oh, hey, Vernon Fish, nice to see you. Thank, I love your work. So uh, thanks so much for joining. Oh, totally agreed. Um, I actually tend, I do leave, I usually turn ray tracing off when I'm doing base lighting, um, <clears throat> Aaron. Just the only reason, uh, <clears throat> so here's the thing. Things behave really weirdly with when you're baked lighting because even if I turn off, you know, uh, ray trace, uh, yeah, ray traced GI, it still shows up even if I turned it off in a post process volume here. So I've had weird mixed results with having ray tracing on. So I tend to just disable ray tracing entirely with the aid of this console command that's called ray tracing dot force all ray tracing effects zero. So yeah, Epic themselves. I can. I'll, I will link, uh, include a link to the description in the description below, um, about the documentation on GPU light mass. Epic clearly states that they recommend turning off ray tracing effects when you bake lighting. And one last question from Antonio. One more. With the lighting bake noise. So there should be. A, which noise are you referring to? You mean over here? Uh, if so, that's only because I haven't actually baked this lighting yet. I only baked this. And the noise, it's pretty much non-existent. I don't see any noise here. It looks pretty darn good. So just you know, just for this, just for, for your sake, I'm going to do full bake one more time. Build this lighting. And you'll see we're not really going to have any more lighting bake noise because of the denoisers. Let's see now. Oh man, thank you so much, Nicholas. I really appreciate that. You're way too kind. Man, guys, I wasn't expecting the super chat at all. Um, I'm touched, honestly. <laughs> it means a lot. Uh, no, the semantic. My light maps are not all green. In fact, they're all red. I'm actually pushing them way higher than they need to be. So as you can see, um, Antonio, I don't I don't have any more noise in my scene. The the, the bake is actually quite clean. Um, even over here, we don't have that weird uh, issue anymore. Uh, so. I'll answer your one last question, Tyler, because you're awesome. Uh, GPU light mass does support God rays, but it's kind of a different way. It, it's not really GPU light mass anymore. GPU light mass is only about baking the light. God rays are a post effect with fog. So, okay. So with that out of the way, um, we're going to go back to getting a still life scene set up. So I'm just going to use this table for now, For to be honest. Like I said earlier, the first thing I do when I create a sequencer, if you don't know how to create a sequencer, go to Cinematics, Add Level Sequence, and hit the camera button here to create a new camera. 
And the first thing I always do is to change the film back. The film back, by default, it's set to 69 digital film. It's really tight. It's really narrow. I much prefer working with a wider field of view. And so I set it to either full frame DSLR, which is much wider, or 69 DSLR. Okay. <clears throat> I have another video coming next week and I'm going to be covering exactly what filmback is and how to make your stuff more cinematic. So stay tuned. So I'm going to, uh, hmm, going to move this right here and I need to find some assets. So fortunately I already took the time to download a bunch of Megascans assets, uh, earlier this afternoon. So I'm going to go ahead and add like a bowl. I need a bowl, right? So you're going to do a still life. You need a bowl. Which one do I like better? Yeah, and I need to exit this. There we go. So I'm gonna have a bowl here. Move like, like this. So don't mind me, I'm just gonna take some time to just set up a quick scene and um, <clears throat> you know, add some fruit and other things to kind of get a still life scene set up. Uh, Alessandro, yes, I definitely turn off ambient occlusion because I don't think it looks good. Because uh, ray trace ambient occlusion will give you a few, some artifacts, some kind of jittery artifacts. It doesn't look very good. And screen space ambient occlusion is, well, it's screen space, and it, it's not very good. So if you're baking your light correctly, you shouldn't even need to have extra ambient occlusion anyway. So let's see now. Oh god, this has really bad LODs. Yes, so Mega Scans by default has some really aggressive LODs. I'm gonna go disable them because screw LODs. I don't have time for that. So we're gonna go right here. Set the number of LODs to zero or one. Hit apply. Save. Close this. There we go. Now we got the full res model here. Close this. I need to find my Mega Scans. The assets, static mesh. There we go. So we got some, oh, nice. We got some apples. Got a pumpkin. Heck yeah, pumpkin. Don't worry. I know the lighting is totally wrong right now. That's fine. I'm probably going to make this lighting dynamic for now. I'm going to set an HDR backdrop because I want to see something outside. There we go. I just did. I just saw your comment, uh, one or one, sir, after I placed the HDRI. <laughs> Great minds think alike. So I'm going to add an avocado because heck yeah, avocado toast. And a potato because everyone likes french fries. Carrots. Apparently carrots help you see better at night. I don't think that's actually true. Is it? I'm not sure. I've got an eggplant, because everyone knows what the eggplant emoji means, right? <laughs> there we go, and let's see, a turnip, sure. Oh, the pleasure's mine, uh, Igor. I'm glad I could help you. I've seen a lot of people starting to use the anamorphic book uh, lately. Um, in quite a few scenes, and I, it, it's really awesome to see because uh, I think I'm a sucker for anamorphic, the anamorphic look. It just it just looks so good. So I'm gonna put this here. Move this apple there. So yeah, don't mind me. Like I said, guys, I'm uh, I'm just doing my thing here, placing some stuff. Yes, Pavel. Um, I will definitely have the, the, the stream available live later, so you can watch it later. <clears throat> oh, that's great to hear, Nicholas. Thanks. It's definitely the um, Environment Light Mixer is super useful. I use that all the time in production now. It's so awesome. Avocado. Yeah, potato. Now you'll notice like these, all these fruits are super kind of low poly and garbage because like I said earlier, mega scans had really aggressive LODs, which it's a good thing. But for this, for the sake of this video, I don't want any LODs. So I don't want a low poly avocado. Nobody have time for that. 
There we go. So I'm going to open my avocado, turn off LODs. I have to do this for every single fruit and vegetable. It's super... I mean, they're probably the console command, actually, now that I think about it. I don't remember what it is by heart. Oops. Um, but if anyone knows what the console command for disabling all LODs, do let me know. Turn this off here. Okay, that's done. Come on, eggplant. I want you nice and round. Okay, now we're starting to look a bit better. Still have a few more left. Thank you, Josh. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna try that right now. R dot force LOD zero. If that works, I will love you. Well, look at that. That actually works. Thank you. I appreciate it, Josh. You're the best. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Tyler. I'm always up for collaborations, for sure. Now, if I was smart, I probably would have set up, like, chaos physics to kind of get my fruit in this bowl in a convincing manner. Um, but I'm not a smart man. Yeah, Josh deserves a cookie. Um, that force LOD trick is uh, <laughs> it's really nice. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I gotta put this eggplant in here. Oh, that's a big one. No, that that I didn't mean that to sound like a dirty joke, but it is a big eggplant. Now, what else could I have on this table? What would fit, feel good here? So I think I'm going to add some herbs, maybe, some, some kind of plants. Yeah, I totally agree, uh, Yahia. Josh is definitely a lifesaver. I'd, I'm going to uh, be using that console command a lot from now on. Oh, this looked weird. There we go. I'm gonna get some herbs. I have some plants here. There we go. Some kind of bay leaves or something. No, not that. So now that we have some fruit in here, I'm gonna go back into my camera view and go here and just kind of frame the shot nicely, right? So I'm gonna make this table bigger. Why does this keep coming up? There we go. And I'm going to set this and move. Whoa. There we go. Sometimes it's really easy to accidentally add stuff to your sequencer. There we go. I'm going to set something like this. Now, after you worked with. Um, <clears throat> Oh, thanks, Josh. Again, good to know. Uh, after you've worked with baked lighting, for now, for, for the start of this uh, still life scene, I'm going to be using totally dynamic lighting, okay? So after you bake lighting, you might not want to have your baked lighting anymore, right? Like I want to actually, I, I want to get rid of my baked lighting. So what do you do? You can go, again, you go to your world settings. I'm going to move this here because my fat ugly head is in the way. And in world settings, to get rid of your baked lighting, in the search details of the world setting, search for force, no compre pre, sorry, force, no pre-computed lighting. Check this box. And once that's done, you can just hit the build button again. And then it gets rid of all your baked lighting. Okay? So now we only have the lighting from our directional light in here. Okay? Because sometimes it can really get annoying when you're trying to change the lighting and stuff. Um, you don't want that baked information anymore, right? So... That's a super handy tip for just eliminating all the baked lighting data from your scene. <clears throat> so I'm 
so now that we have this, I kind of want to have my ray tracing stuff back. So I'm going to go to fourth all ray tracing effects to one. And now we should be getting our stuff back. So I'm going to go my post process volume. I'm going to turn on the ray tracing stuff back on. So maybe my final gather. There we go. Something like that. Now ignore the artifact stuff. That's normal. That's fine for now. I just want to kind of establish my framing and get a basic lighting setup done for now. And I think I'm going to move all the fruit. Away from a window like that. There we go. And I think I don't want to see the wall either. So I'm going to remove all this. Getting a, a nice still life is all about getting a uh, a good a good composition, right? It's it's super important to get it to compose your shots well. I'm gonna extend this a little bit, and I'm gonna duplicate this wall Something like that. There we go. Just because it, it, composition is important in just about every aspect of create of CG making images, right? So. I'm gonna make this like all this and move this into the sun. There we go. <clears throat> and I'm gonna use a longer focal length. Right now it's a 35. I really hate the 35 millimeter focal length. It just it's the default setting in most 3D applications, and it's just the worst. I'm going to go for 85. 85 is much tighter, but, oh man, when you get that nice creamy depth of field in there, it's like, ooh, so good. Oops. Something like that. There we go. And we're starting to get something interesting. There we go. So see how 85 millimeter kind of compresses everything nicely and brings the focus really onto these onto these plants, right? Whoops. Not the plants, but the fruits and veggies. There we go. Why does this keep going up? I keep... Yeah, that's not a bad idea, actually, Stefano. Autofocus would probably be pretty nice. I, I never even thought about that, but that's a really good point. There we go. So now, whoa, what the heck do I keep framing something? There we go. And now we're starting to get, whoops, got the wrong. Let's do, say 1.8, there we go, something like that. Yeah, I, I will. But I think the reason for the HDRI was because I think I keyframed it and uh, it was in my sequence for some reason. So that's probably why. What in the... Where did my camera... That's weird. Why did that happen? Okay, that was weird. So I'm just gonna keyframe my camera now so it doesn't stop if it freaking stops moving. Now that this. There we go. Something like that. Okay. Keyframe that. And now we're just gonna move stuff around. Something like maybe move the pumpkin back a bit. I realize this is pretty tedious, guys, so don't be afraid to tell me to uh, move on to something a bit more interesting. <clears> Thank <throat> you. 
Excuse me. Thanks so much, Pyro. Okay, well, something like that. So now it's really just a matter of finding a composition that just works, something that looks good, something that's decent. Um, composition is one of those things that photographers spend a lifetime trying to master, right? Like there's, no one's ever a master of composition. There's always more to learn. that and maybe what else what else could be nice here what have i got hmm. look pretty cool oh yeah that looks pretty nice so like i said this is totally dynamic lighting right now and we're going to bring this to the next level later we're going to bake the lighting and we can compare and see like oh man like yeah baked lighting did look much better or the other way around the nice thing like i said earlier the, the nice thing about <clears throat> about direct like direct sunlight or dynamic lighting is that it's what you see is what you get there's no guesswork involved there's no unexpected nonsense uh it, it's all um I, I really like the what you see is what you get approach of it. So why do I have a potato here? I'm gonna delete that. I think I'm gonna want to get more apples. One more apple up here. <clears throat> there we go. I think we're starting to get something that looks decent at this point. And once this is done, I I know the guys. This is super boring. Um, right now. Uh, Nicholas, I haven't actually done much physics uh, stuff yet. I really want to jump into Chaos now that the, you can actually download uh, the Chaos build of Unreal. And that has fully dynamic simulated physics, which is going to be amazing. Uh, but no, I haven't actually had a chance to jump into that yet. So I'm not totally informed as to how it all works yet. Okay, so I'm actually starting to get pretty happy with this now. Which is just the general look of things, just the general framing. It's not intended to be, this is not meant to be a masterpiece here. Okay, I'm going to move this. So again, I don't think I have, ah, that's why I meant that the field looked bad. Again, temporal A upside link zero. <clears throat> I don't think I needed it in this scene, but you never know. And now, let's say, for example, I'm happy with this lighting for now, okay? Maybe just rotate this. Not lighting, sorry. I'm, let's say I'm happy with the framing and the composition of the models and stuff in this scene. I'm going to move this guy here. Last thing I'm going to do, I promise, and then we can move on to the juicy lighting bits. So, give me 30 seconds, and I think we're going to be ready to jump back into lighting. So, okay, I think we can jump back into lighting now. So, now that I've set up, I'm going to save my scene. Let's say that this framing and this bowl of fruit is the best damn bowl of fruit I've ever made in my life. How do we go ahead and improve lighting in this? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give myself two, uh, two layouts, two, two windows to work with. So I can set this here and set this to camera and lit. There we go. So now I have two cameras. So that means I can work in one and still see my camera in the other. This can be pretty heavy performance-wise. Um, 
but you know let me know if the stream is really laggy because this may be too much of a strain on my system so let me know in the comments guys oh man ali el hashimi i really appreciate that you're awesome um thanks for the kind words i don't know what to say um i'm 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 touched i haven't been expecting all this so thank you so much i really appreciate it so let's say that like i said earlier <laughs> Again, let's say this is the best damn bowl of fruit I've ever made. How can we improve the lighting? So we're going with the totally dynamic lighting here. And what we're going to do is right now, I have a directional light, as you can see, right? And everything is updating in real time. All the shadows, nothing's baked. Um, I kind of want to make this a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to maybe move this wall a little bit. I'm going to move this over here so we can get a little bit more of a backlit look. Backlighting is always going to look better. Backlit, light coming from behind your subject should always look much better. Um, here's a great example right here. Okay, so I'm going to grab my light again. Uh, directional light, just like this here. I'm going to move this here. So let's say, for example, I want, if I wanted to make it front lit, front lit never looks good because, whoops. I'm just going to place another light to simulate the front lighting. I'm going to hide this, and I'm going to add a rect light here. Front lighting, well, this actually looks pretty cool. In general, front lighting is not very good, but for some reason, it actually looks pretty awesome here. Terrible example, but, but hey, well, you know. <clears throat> uh, Peter Wiegersma, I'm sorry if I butchered your last name there, but Peter, um... Yeah, you can get a plugin called Chaos. Um, I think it's a plugin that you need to download a whole other build of Unreal to get the Chaos to work. And Chaos is Unreal's new physics simulation system. <clears throat> so right now, for the sake of this, uh, this was a terrible example because actually this kind of looks pretty cool. Um, but in general, I try to avoid a front lit look so backlighting is always going to look super nice so now i uh, let's say i want to simulate kind of a late afternoon feel this is going to be a little bit too bright i'm going to turn this down to 50 maybe a little bit darker and then i also want to soften the shadows a bit now i've talked about this in my in last week's video uh softening the shadows is done in the source angle so by default the source angle is set to 0 0.5357, and that's actually corresponds to the right size of the sun. So your shadows will be not perfectly sharp, just slightly soft. If you want to make it even softer, let's say bump this up to 1, or 2, or 3, let's say 10 even. Notice how the shadows just got way softer? Uh, I don't recommend actually like 10 or 20, but you get the point. It's noisier, but the shadows are softened a little bit, right? And that can be a really nice look. So I'm going to leave this a 5, just to soften it ever so slightly and if you want to get rid of the noisy samples you can increase the samples of your light so just to for example's sake here i'm going to set this to 10 right here and you'll see the noise gets really out of control but you can bump up the samples here so i'm going to go to samples in the details panel and set this to maybe 10 and you'll see it gets it's less noisy it was still noisy but not as bad and so it's a sample that will basically help you with your the quality of your shadows. This is especially the case with soft shadows. I can set this back down to one. <clears throat> so yeah, again, if you have soft shadows and your shadows are really noisy, samples per pixel right here in the ray tracing, whoops, in the ray tracing tab of your light is where you fix this. <clears throat> so I'm going to revert this back to a more reasonable size. And see, see the difference here between source angle 0 0.5 and, you know, 10? Uh, it's going to need a little bit of art direction. There's no right or wrong answer. I like it a little bit softer, but you can do whatever you want. Oh my gosh, God, Gary, thank you so much. Uh, you're amazing. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome, Antonio. So... Now, you may notice, okay, like, how, what, how else can we improve this lighting right now? Right now, I'm not super happy with the, the indirect lighting. I think it's, it's kind of splotchy. We see it here. 
I gotta make this full screen again. And it's still kind of splotchy. Let's go ahead and check out our post process volume. So right here, got a post process volume. You can type for ray tracing. Just type ray in the details panel. And let's take a look at our settings here. So I turned off ray trace ambient occlusion earlier because we were baking the light. Um, now I'm gonna turn this back on. And obviously there's not even that much of a difference. So I'll just leave that, oh, that's why. Yeah, there's not even that much difference. I'm just gonna leave that there for now. Final gather. Turn this down. Refra uh, r roughness, 0.8 generally. Tone this down as well. R um, ray tracing reflections tend to be really noisy from the get-go. Uh, so in order to increase the, the quality of your reflection, you're going to want to increase the, the number the samples. There's not that many crazy reflections in the scene right now, so I'm just going to leave this at one until later. But for now, uh, I think the next thing, I might want to get a little bit of like a, a kind of a god ray effect in here, right? Just like a soft light coming from the top right corner. How would you do that? So we're going to go ahead and go into visual effects and add a exponential height fog now you might i dragged it in my scene it doesn't seem to do anything i need to here we go and what we're going to do is select our exponential height fog scroll down into volumetric fog here and now you'll see the scene changed a little bit see like toggle it on and off it gets a little bit hazy only slightly um but you're going to see why soon Uh, sure, Adel. I'll uh, check uh, later on Instagram. So, next up, in your directional light, now to make sure that you enable volumetric fog, okay? And in your directional light, we, right here, there's a setting called volumetric scattering intensity. Again, in my directional light, I have my directional light selected, and in indirect, uh, sorry, in volumetric scattering intensity, we can bump this up. So you notice how it's kind of getting hazier like that? This is basically how you're adding like god rays, so to speak. So if I'm gonna go to 10 or 100 and go, you know, maybe not 100 or 200, 50 maybe, 20. I'm just exaggerating the effect now, but this is kind of how you get a haze in here. It's hard to control that fall off. So just to show you guys what it's doing, I'm just gonna, whoa, wrong scene. There we go. <clears throat> so you'll see it, it's affecting the fog in our scene now. Now why? This should be casting... Sh hmm, that's weird. Normally you should be getting... That's very strange. Normally you should be getting guide ray coming through the window, so something is different here, so I'm not entirely sure why that's happening. Maybe I did. I don't think I did, though. Oops. No, ray tracing shadows are on. But I know I've, I, I had this set up earlier, so I'm not entirely sure why. Like, I literally just did this earlier, so I'm not entirely certain why it's not working right now. It was working fine. Anyway, well... That's, uh, well, ignore that. Why would it be doing that? Sorry, I'm just going to take two seconds to kind of figure out why, because I know I got this to work. And it did work with ray tracing, guaranteed. Hmm. Turn off this and then. Ah, oh, there we go. No, you were right. It is Ray Trade Shadows. <clears throat> I had to dis it. Yeah, I remember now. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Josh. 
I appreciate that. So what I now I remember what I would do in, in production. So in order to get God rays to work, you need to make sure that your directional light is not casting ray trace shadows. So you need to de uncheck ray, cast ray tracing shadows, and then it's going to work, right? So now when I turn this on like this, you'll see I need to turn off the damn indirect lighting here. Uh, there we go. So now we can see we have proper god rays coming in, right? But unfortunately, these shadows are not ray traced anymore. So what do you do? There's a little bit of a work around here that you can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my directional light, and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to hit Control w to have a second directional light. So now I have two. I'm going to move my outliner out of my way, out of my stupid face, so you guys can see. Uh, I have two directional lights. They're in the same position. One of them will have ray trace shadows, the other will not. Okay? Now, so you can see right here, one width and one, and so in directional light two, it's going to be ray traced. That's it here. So now we have two lights, but you'll see I don't want to have twice the intensity, right? So what I can do is I'm going to set the intensity here of my first one. So let's say I'm going to call this one God Rays and call this one uh, Normal Light. But because of the way I'm going to group these together, there we go. So this is the God Rays one, and I'm going to turn the intensity way down, something to like 0.1 or 1, okay? So it's not really affecting our scene, okay? And then we can go ahead and bump the, the volumetric scattering intensity to like 300 or 1,000, something ridiculous, a ridiculously high number because to compensate for the low intensity. And now you can get both ray trace shadows. Let's go back in our camera view here. Now we have both god rays and soft ray traced shadows. That's how you would do it. It's, uh, it's really hacky. It's not a great solution, but it works. And I mean, it's all, keep in mind, it's also twice as much power because you have two directional lights costing twice as many shadows. Uh, so yeah. <clears throat> so, so as you can see, I'm going to turn down the, 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 the crazy intensity of this God Rays one. Maybe like now it's set, as you can see here, it's set to 10,000. If I bring it down to 5,000, it's still, you know, okay. There we go. So now it's a soft one. So if I hide this, whoa, that's really strong. Yeah. See, you'll see you're kind of struggling to get a balance of the two. It's really weird. It's like I said, it's hacky, but Hey, it's like most things in Unreal. A lot of things in Unreal are pretty hacky right now. So take that with a grain of salt. So I, I hope that it seems you guys are getting pretty excited about that tip. Um, it's a really hacky workaround, but yeah. Um, Gaurav, I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, I don't think you can, you would probably have to add like actual particles in your scene to get dust. Um, there may be a, a smarter way of doing this. I'm not aware of it though. <clears throat> yeah, I thought so too, Kevin. I um, I was kind of in a rush for work. I'm like, okay, I just need to have both God Rays and Ray Trace Shadows. So, but it, honestly, it was a happy accident. I kind of discovered it by accident. So, total Bob Ross moment. Um, so, I'm glad you guys liked that one. So, now I still think this is a little bit too strong. So, I'm going to turn down the God Rays, maybe down to 1,000. 500? Zero. Why is it not? There we go. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not... I seem to have lost control over the fog, but hey. Cool. Go, go figure. But yeah, so now we're... Um, so now we're starting to get something that's kind of interesting, kind of a cozy cozy look here. What in the world? Okay, there we go. I'm just going to try and figure out why that doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it's kind of hacky, but hey. <clears throat> so, you know, like I said, this is kind of our late afternoon feel. And this is what, These are the main things that I do. I think you should normalize. 
Maybe. I'll try I'll try that. Oh, you know what? Thank you, Carlos. Thanks. There we go. Thank you. I don't know why. Before I can yeah, it that's what I, this is the issue, actually an issue that I've had in production where uh, when I use this trick, sometimes Unreal gets confused and doesn't know which one to use. And in all in all fairness, I should be controlling the God Raid with the God Raid light, but sometimes it, it just breaks. So uh, thanks, Carlos, for the tip. I appreciate that. <clears throat> so now I'm going to turn this down, maybe down to 25. There we go. Just a little bit. I, I just want a hint of God Raid in there, right? So if I, if I, yeah, I'm just going to leave that there for now. Oh, of course, when I hide and unhide, everything just breaks again. So, yeah, you guys see what I mean? By hiding and unhiding both lights, it kind of got confused and I kind of switched the values again. So, take this with a grain of salt. It works sometimes, but it's kind of iffy. Just so you know, it's uh, it, it's not a it's not a great solution. So these are the main things so far that I that I do when I'm just using um, what's the word dynamic lighting. I'm gonna go ahead and bump the indirect lighting a little bit more of my normal light here. I'm gonna call this indirect. So <clears throat> all your lights, your directional light, for example, you can control the indirect lighting intensity with the indirect lighting intensity slider. Okay, so you can this basically controls the amount of bounce light that you get in your scene with the help of ray traced global illumination so just uh so you do have a, a way to art directing this at first it's kind of i didn't know it would hidden the light i thought if i leave this at one and in my outliner i'm going to search for my post process volume and i'm going to go to ray trace global illumination and you would think that you have a way of art directing the intensity of the indirect lighting in the post process volume but you don't control it there you control it in the settings of your light so again, I'm going to go to my directional light and control the indirect lighting here with indirect lighting intensity. So I'm going to bump this up. Maybe this is probably a bit too much, but it's good to know. So I'm going to let this to one maybe. So that's pretty much all I do. That's why I think working with dynamic lights is so much more easy, so much easier, sorry. Um, because like I said many times, what you see is what you get. And there's no bullshit like you're, you're not going to run into this issue like oh suddenly my shadows are all disgusting you're going to see it right away and it especially sucks when you you know you bump up the quality setting let's say you're baking your light and you're going for a final bake you bump up the, the, the all the settings to max and suddenly you 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 wait an hour or two hours to for the light to bake and then something doesn't look good something messed up and you're like ah not to wait another two hours to to bake the lighting, that's not the that's not a problem with dynamic lighting, right? So, just kind of keep that in mind. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take a screenshot here. And do this, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to. Don't save. So I'm going to, kind of make the same scene with, baked lighting this time around. Okay. And we can compare the results, see if, if you know, doing this would worth it or not. Yes, exactly, Yeah. Or the PC crashes while baking. It really sucks, especially when you've been waiting for a long time. Dynamic lighting is way easier to work with in general. But it comes at a slight cost of performance and a little bit of quality. You do get better quality lighting with a really good bake. Just, that's just how it is. <clears throat> so I'm going to make sure I'm going to go to my world settings. And I'm going to search for forest. No, there we go. Uncheck this because I want to bake my lighting now. And now I don't need to have two uh, directional lights anymore. I'm just going to have <clears throat> normal light and guard rays. I'm going to delete the guard rays one. And I'm going to turn off. I'm going to set ray traced. Actually, I'm going to turn off ray tracing entirely. So I'm going to do this here. There we go. Now, in order to get better or good soft shadows with a directional light, when you're baking your light, you need to change this angle in two areas, okay? So we talked about changing the angle of the light 
um, early to get Soft Shadows. <clears throat> and, uh, but you need to change it in two places. You need to change it in a source angle, and you also need to change it. I'm just going to search for angle here. You'll see light source angle and in light mass. I'm not sure what, that's probably grayed out right now because I need to bake first. Normally it's not grayed out, but you need to change the light source angle to 5 and 5 in both. So, I'm going to open up GPU light mass again. I can, oh, I know why. I can set my directional light to move, uh, stationary, sorry. And now, when I search for angle, there we go. Now, light source angle should be set to 5. Set to 5 on both, okay? This will give you a slightly softer look. <clears throat> and now, I'm going to just bake the lighting. And I'll answer some questions. So, please get the LSS for dynamic light. It's day and evening. I'll definitely try DLSS. I haven't tried DLSS at all yet, so uh, I, I do want to get on that. Oh, yeah. I also need to change the uh, light map resolution on these bad boys. So I'm going to go here, optimization view modes, light map density. These are actually not too bad right now. I'm going to increase this a little bit. Like that. How does that look? Yeah, that's fine. And same thing here, me 512. And this one, probably 256. Yes, it's red. Red just means it's going to be sharper. Green is might be a little bit too blurry for my taste, so yeah. Oh yeah, Scott. Totally agree. Like, fill cards work pretty well, but the thing is, indirect lighting in Unreal is kind of like, eh, it's kind of iffy, if not great yet, if not perfect. Um, but when you're baking lighting, you can totally use a fill card. That works actually pretty well. So if you have, like, big white bounce card, you can use that in, in, in Unreal. <clears throat> uh, yes, IS3D, to bake lighting to models, you need a second UBW map. Uh, Unreal can create its own as well, but it's better to do your own, for sure. So... I'm going to go bake this again and see how this looks. I'm going to full bake, yes. Yeah, Nicholas, I, I do want to play around with DLSS. I think the last time I tried to install it, it didn't work so well because I needed to get like the latest graphics card driver and I didn't. I was too lazy to install it. So I'll be playing around with it soon, for sure. But actually, one of the main reason I haven't used DLSS is because it doesn't, it's not supported with the movie render queue. So I, I use Unreal to render out frames, and if I can't use DLSS to render out my frames, well, it's kind of moot at that point. So that's why I haven't used it. But the day that DLSS is supported by the movie render queue, that's going to be a game changer. I, uh, Philip, I have not tried the NVIDIA RTX GI. Not yet, but I w will probably be doing my own custom build of Unreal to get that feature, because I do want to play around with it. There we go. Now we've got our baked lighting. And right away, now this fog is a little bit too intense. I'm going to turn this down. Uh, I'm not really happy with that, how intense that is. There we go. Maybe something like that, that's better. Now, right away... I can tell you that like this is already looking so much better. Look at these apples. We're getting so much better bounce here. Um, let's let's compare with the uh, previous version. Comparing here, like this, we're getting. Look at this awesome bounce light happening on these apples. It just much better GI in here with baked lighting. And same thing with underneath the bowl. This looks much better here, right around this area than it does here. On the on the dynamic lighting version, that's here on the left, uh, everything's kind of even. You don't get these nice big pools, spots of light. The uh, the base lighting version on the right is much better. Now the only thing that doesn't look very good is this onion stalk thing. This looks really bad. I'm not sure why that is. Um, <clears throat> I might have to play around with some settings here. But uh, you gotta. 
let me know in the comments, guys. What do you, how do you guys feel about the um, the baked lighting version? Do you guys like it better, or do you prefer the ray traced or t fully dynamic version? What are your thoughts? Let me know. <clears throat> so, I mean, apart from this, if I just hide this, man, uh, I think it's day and night. This looks so much better than uh, than the ray trace version. <clears throat> So the difference, so Nicholas, uh, yes and no. I think you're going to get much better result. I could use Brute Force uh, in a Ray Trace setting. So, that, because, so here's the thing. Before I get carried away, I'm going to go into my post process volume. And let's take a look at the Ray Trace uh, global illumination settings. Okay, so right here, we have two modes. Okay, <clears throat> we've got Final Gather and we've got brute force. So final gather is only one bounce, okay? If you set the max bounces to like 50, it's only gonna count one bounce. That's what final gather does. It's only one bounce of lighting. You can't even, no matter how high you crank up those bounces, you're not gonna get more bounce. You can use brute force right here, the, the, the second one, and that will calculate other more bounces, more consecutive bounces, uh, but it is, unusably heavy like it is so heavy i mean i'm just using a little rtx 2060 super uh it kills my frame rate it makes unreal virtually unusable even in small scenes it's really not ideal so that's why i'm not a big fan of ray trace gi at least in its current state and we can see again i'm just going to show you guys the example here i mean the the baked version is so much better of course except for the uh, the, the, the green onion stocks here. That, this looks really bad. There's probably something, some very silly setting that I need to change to fix that. But the rest is day and night. It looks so much better here. Uh, Josh, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, it is probably a little bit easier to art direct this way. And all, again, if I go my post process volume, I can go ahead and type in direct and I can totally art, art direct this as well. I can tone this down I can turn it off completely and only have direct lighting or have it way stronger or, you know, like this. It's it just you have way more control with the baked lighting. If you take the time to uh, to, to, to really bake your lighting correctly, man, the baked lighting here is, is day and night. <clears throat> and yeah, Philip, I totally agree. The the onion looked much better um, in, in the dynamic lighting. Totally, for sure. <clears throat> so... Yeah, that that's kind of what I wanted to show you. That this, it, the nice thing about baking your light is it's a little bit more time consuming, it's a little bit more tedious, and a lot more can go wrong. But there's no denying the results are that much better. <clears throat> oh hey, Peter! Thanks so much for stopping by. You're the best man. I I was just talking about you, um, the other day, and I just had to say you're a real sweetheart, man. You're great. So you keep doing what you do. <clears throat> so yeah guys that do you guys now it's time for it's already been two hours wow time flies um now it's going to be like a nice little q a session so if you've been saving all your questions up until now now's the time to ask them so i'll be giving you guys maybe another 10 15 20 minutes so let's go with the questions thanks so much peter by the way <clears throat> Oh, Nicholas, if you're trying to do better arch with interiors, bake lighting is hands down the best way to do it. I think it's one of those things where it's more about speed versus quality. If you need something faster and that jumping that looks decent from the get-go, dynamic lighting is the way to go. But if you, if you have the time and you need the absolute best quality, go ahead and bake your lighting with GPU light mass. <clears throat> uh, tone mapper sharpen 1.4, Philip. Yes, I can try that. Let's do that right now. It does make a bit of a difference. The sharpen stuff, I actually don't really do any tone mapper things, uh, Philip, because when I render, I actually remove the tone mapper. In the movie render queue, I, I just get rid of that tone mapper entirely because I don't want it. <clears throat> no worries, uh, Enzite, or however you say that. Um, the stream will be on my channel forever so if you missed it don't feel bad it's going to be here to stay <clears throat> uh 
Uh, I don't know, Carlos, if Port Light Math Portal works with uh, GPU Light Math. I haven't tried it. Uh, one or one, sir. What about fill light? Uh, usually I do fill light. It depends on if I need it or not, right? So I can I can always add an extra little light there. Um, add an extra area light. So I love you for fill light. I love using the rect light, and this it kind of makes this big, nice soft area light here, right? Um, <clears throat> that's that's a great way of adding fill light. You tone down the intensity. There's no right or wrong answer. If you need it, add it. If you don't need it, don't use it. And yeah, jo Josh, I totally agree. Um, combining ray trace reflections with GPU light mass is the way to go for Archivist, hands down, for sure. Ray trace reflections are just looking so good nowadays. Uh, Tyler, what setting should I focus on for adjusting if your scene lighting is looking a little blown out with GPU light mass? So when you say a little bit blown out, you mean like overexposed? What you can do is up here, you can probably just change the exposure. So I can just go ahead and tone it down or brighten it up like this. Did that make sense, uh, Tyler? I hope that I hope I'm understanding your question properly. And yeah, Nicholas, I totally agree. If if you're you know you're on the time budget and you know you're kind of on in a rush, dynamic lighting is the way to go. But if you have the time, baked lighting will give you much better results. Uh, Alice. I use ACES at work, uh, in production, in a film production, yes. Unreal's support of ACES is questionable at best. Uh, it's kind of iffy and doesn't work that great. So for now, I don't use ACES in Unreal. In animation, a great question, Christian, actually. For animation, you can't really bake the lighting because things are moving, right? Uh, so you can bake lighting for your environment, for your static meshes, but for your character, you're going to need dynamic lighting on them. Uh, Nicholas, I'm actually considering Patreon eventually. May I don't think it's quite the time for it yet. Um, but it's if there's enough demand for it, I will definitely consider it for sure. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, Fairy Indra, my graphics card is a RTX 2060 Super, so it has ray tracing if I need it. Yeah, uh, Alice, I totally agree. I, there, I can, li I will link in the description once this live stream is over. There's a live stream on from Epic where they talk about Aces and how to set it up properly, and you'll see it's really tedious and really annoying. And it, I think they got it to work, but it's kind of eh. It doesn't work that great yet. It's it's very. Uh, I think you you can get it to work though, if you absolutely need it. There is a way, but personally, I haven't had to use it yet. Uh, Philip, how do I deal with you know learning Unreal Four with everyone doing everything differently? Most tutorials are outdated, even in Unreal Academy, and at some point, you don't know who's right. You're totally right, and this is actually a problem that Epic reached out to me about. Um, and they were telling me like they're they're working on a system or a new way uh, called Epic, um, Unreal Online Learning, and they're trying to centralize all those tutorials. Now there's always going to be people making YouTube tutorials, and there's a hundred different ways of doing things, like you say. Um, but I agree, it's really easy for people to get lost um, in, uh, in in the sea of tutorials, right? So. I think Epic Epic is aware of the problem, and they're trying to, to, to work on a way to get better, more reliable, and more up-to-date information centralized in one place. <clears throat> oh my goodness, so many questions, guys. Yes, I'm going to save the stream. Let's see, when's the next stream? Uh, that's a good question, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> And that's a great point, Peter. It, it is all about playing with Unreal and what works for you. There is no right way of doing anything. It's all about, you know, getting the result that you want. If you did one thing and you got the right result, hey, good for you. There, there's no, that's not a wrong way of doing it, right? So um, there's, of course, it's, there's a set of, you know, core good practices that you should follow. But, you know, all roads lead to Rome, as we say in French. <clears throat> 
Uh, IS three D. So with uh, that's a great question. Refle reflection probes, or also known as reflection capture actors, they work differently with ray trace scenes than they do with rasterized scenes. So with ray trace scenes, um, capture reflector actors only capture, I think it's the last reflection, if I'm not mistaken. And you can read up about it on Unreal's own documentation. They have, uh, um, they mentioned this in their ray tracing section. So reflection probes work very differently with ray tracing than they, they do normally. Just keep that in mind. Uh, Nicholas, no, I don't have a roadmap because honestly, I have a list of things I want to cover, um, but I tend to decide on a week's ba on you know at the last moment uh, what my video is going to be for this week because it all depends on how much time I have, uh, how busy the week's been. So sometimes like oh, I need to get a video out, so it needs to be very quick, and uh, so the topic is just very spontaneous sometimes. Thanks so much, Yahia. I definitely will consider doing more live, live streams, for sure. Uh, Ali El Hashimi. Yes, I will be making more cinematics, for sure. I really enjoyed that project. That was a very good learning experience, so there's more to that to come, for sure. Aaron's. How would you go about having a dynamic character or object in a baked scene? Um... So that's, that's the thing about uh, stationary lights. Stationary lights will light your static object, but they'll also affect dynamic objects as well. So stationary lights are, are kind of a great hybrid for that very reason. So that's how you would do it. Tyler, how would you combine GPU light math based lighting with ray trace reflections? That's easy. You just enable ray tracing, turn off all the other ray tracing effects except for ray traced reflections. I think there's even a console command to specifically disable ray traced global elimination so you don't get those weird artifacts and you can just leave ray traced reflections on. So that's how you I would do it. <clears throat> Peter, uh thanks. Yeah, I mean like I said, I I'm definitely thinking about P Patreon for sure. Um <clears throat> And I mean, I, I'm honestly flattered by how supportive you guys have been. And I said this before in my thank you video, but guys, I'm overwhelmed and totally floored by your support and your encouragement and your general positivity. It's been, it's been so surprising to me. I never expected this. I really love the community of people like people like you, Peter, and people like you, Yah Yahima, um, <clears throat> Yahia, sorry, Yahia, sorry, I mispronounced your name. You both have been so awesome. Uh, you're, you're such good people. You're super friendly. You're super encouraging. There's no toxicity. And I I really appreciate that. I, I think coming from, uh, coming from a photography background where the photography community can be very toxic from what I've noticed, and it, it's just not been very fun. Um, I, I really like how supportive you guys have been. So thanks so much for everything, guys. You've been so great. And yeah, same goes for you, Peter. Um, if you have any questions for me, my DMs are always open to you as well. Uh, Fairy Indra, I have an RTX 3060 Ti. Awesome. Man, lucky you for even getting a 3060. Those are hard to find. Um, but when I render a shadow and reflection, it's really heavy. So are you talking about ray trace shadows and reflection? I'm, I'm assuming. And of course, it depends on your scene. It's, it's really hard to tell you why uh, without seeing your scene. <clears throat> oh, thank you so much, Javier. I, I really appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Uh, Alice, forgive me if this is foolish, but I'm a new to virtual production, but I should be thinking about distance fall off inverse square law or if it's better to cheat it. Uh, that's a really good question, and I'm not entirely sure how to answer it. Honestly, I just leave the settings at default and play with the intensity. <laughs> it's kind of what I do. Um, if it the, the rule of thumb that I tend to follow is if it looks good, it works right? Um, but the inverse square, square law is there for a reason. I think it's enabled by default. You can de you can disable the inverse square law if you want to. I never do. I, I think I like using my lights in a way that they were, that they should behave in real life. So I, I hope that answers your question, Alice. It's not a, it's not a, a silly question at all. IS3D. Thank you so much, IS3D. I, I appreciate that. I I hope if you have any suggestions for other videos, do let me know. 
Um, I'm always open to any of you, so feel free to poke me on Instagram. I try to get back to all the comments on YouTube, uh, but it's really quickly becoming a full-time job, and I really, I'm really sorry if I can't get back to all of you. Um, I try to, but it, it's, it's sometimes it's pretty hard to. <laughs> Uh, Jakob, did you have any trouble with high resolution rendering in movie render queue? I had any plans of touching this topic. Uh, that's a great question. I haven't thought about covering that, but I guess I could make a video about it. That's, uh, that's useful. Um, what kind of issue did you have with it? Um, it's kind of normal to, uh, to run to issue because you're going to have issues with screen space effects, like bloom, particles, sometimes even motion blur, because the scene split in four, right? So... That's a common issue that you're going to have with it. I recommend that you read Epic's documentation on the uh, movie, movie render queue and the high resolution tiling. That might answer some of your questions. <clears throat> Milagro, yes, it's going to be on my channel later. Nicholas, yes, I actually plan on getting a sequencer video out with animation uh, as well. That's on the list. So I don't have a roadmap, but that's definitely on the list. Uh, Christian, yes, 100%, I will. Uh, let me know, actually, just a bit more specifically, like, poke me on Instagram or something, uh, if you have any more suggestions for studio lighting specifically. Oh my goodness, so many questions. Oh, man. Uh, Karen, Karen Sharma, yeah, I already have an outdoor scene with dynamic lighting. Um, in my, I think my last, last week's video, I covered that a little bit. So, check that out. Thank you so much, Jesse Thorpe. I appreciate it. Antonio, now that you have mentioned your photography background and video, like things like using a physical camera and Unreal and its features. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gaurav Mishra, that's... You know what? I, I don't even know how I manage both, to be honest. I try to get at least one video out a week. So one video is pretty reasonable. It's It doesn't take too much time out of my week, so... I do this totally out of my spare time for fun, right? So I kind of have to make sure that um, I work on the e in the evenings after work or really early in the morning. So uh, because I have a day job that's not this. So uh, mornings and evenings are usually when I do my YouTube stuff. <clears throat> Jakob, um, I have a video about crashes actually you might want to check if you haven't already that might be useful for you when it comes to running out of memory is3d uh yes there is um you can i can't remember off the top of my head but yes you can get an alpha channel in your exr output thanks so much peter thanks for watching i'll you keep rocking on as well uh, yes, my issue guys are looking for my Instagram name. It is at William underscore Fauche. That's my personal one. And at William dot Fauche dot VFX. Posted that in the chat. There are my Instagram. I think it's William dot Fauche dot VFX. I need to check, but I, it's one of those. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Gary. Hi, Gary House. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the kind words. Josh, oh man, thanks Josh, I, I really appreciate that. And uh, again, thank you for that console command tip. That was a lifesaver. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help. <clears throat> Guys, I think I'm gonna have to call it a night. It's been uh, two hours and 20 minutes. I don't want this video to get too long, but thank you so much for all your questions. Thank you for watching. Guys, thank you all for the donations as well, the super chats. Um, 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 my heart's swelling. I'm floored. I I didn't expect this at all. So thank you, all of you. You guys all keep give me the motivation to keep going, and I'm so thankful for all of you. So just keeping you, keep asking questions. I'll try to get back to you, um, as much as I can. Again, I can't promise I I'll get back to every single one of you, but I try to. So again, thanks so much, guys. Have a good night, and I'll see you guys next time.